underlying rule. He, he still yeah. owes the 455. He still owes the, like, again, this is just while he's appealing appeal. that decision. Yes. Does he have $175 million? Uh, he can probably get it. I doubt. I think he's getting pressed up against the wall right now in terms of what he has on hand that's liquid that a, a surety company would feel comfortable bonding because of the collaterals there. They're not going to want to take little bitty pieces of a bunch of different real estate. They're going to want to go after his cash. Um, what's perplexing to me is he already said last week that he has $500 million. After yeah. After a year ago saying he had $400 million right. growth, and then in between those two moments saying, actually, I don't have anything. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think in that context, I think the appellate court didn't do a service towards a defendant being clear and honest with the court, even if, and I think the appellate court clearly thinks um, that Angoran overreached, I think, that, you know, they've, they've stayed both the, the size of the judge, not the size of the judgment, but but what Trump needed to put down to appeal. Yeah. But they also they also stayed uh, keeping the boys out of the uh, out of the business and some of the other punitive things yeah. that Angoran put in place around the business. So it indicates to me that they felt he overreached. Having said all of that, that that's what gets ironed out in an, in an appeals process. It, they, they they've sort of gotten into the middle of this now and and cut away at some of the foundations of both the ruling and they've signaled what they think about the whole process and that feels untoward. On the other hand, Donald Trump and and people of means routinely get breaks in the judicial process yeah. that we average you know parking toll violators <laughs> do not do not.